Welcome to uh, Bridge of Friendship and Cross Border Talk, another podcast uh, which we dedicate to the issue of social change and uh, agency in Southeastern Europe. Uh, it is an issue which uh, becomes uh, more and more important as our countries uh, look for their place maybe in a changing world. And as we face various problems, social problems, political problems, other problems in our societies, and we also need a positive version of what happens in order to be active and maybe want more. So um, we are going to discuss about a number of issues related to social change and agency in our region with a person which uh, I believe... uh, could speak a lot and has a lot to say. This is Kodru Vrabie, who is uh, an expert on good governance uh, from Romania. He has been a trainer in uh, various programs for um, good governance, reforming justice, preparation of young leaders and others uh, in uh, Romania and the Republic of Moldova. And he is also a graduate of the American University in Bulgaria which I believe makes him well positioned in contact with a number of allies in these countries and knowledgeable about societies. So um, we, I hope we'll offer uh, a lot of good ideas and uh, concepts about how to frame these ideas of change and agency. Um, because I, I have the feeling we too much um, uh, reduce these under these issues to something very uh, limited. And for me, it's not so much, change is not so much being pro and anti, at least for me, somebody politically or uh, geopolitically, but for me, pro change uh, is maybe thinking in more complex terms, <laughs> first of all, about everything. So, uh, Kodru, welcome to the podcast and let me start with uh, first maybe some attempt at definition. Uh, We have had many theories about what change means in uh, our region, which maybe many people agree it's kind of a little bit peripheral to the EU. Uh, There is this theory that change means old allies or allies from the transition being replaced by new allies, by let's say, more modern, more technological, or whatever you call them, more uh, clean elites. There is this idea that uh, change maybe means that oligarchical uh, superstructure of society is replaced by some uh, superstructure related to corporate and NGO sector. There is a idea of change which empowers workers and salaried workers especially. Um, also, there are some people fight for change in the sense of changing the balance between national capital and international capital into the benefit of national capital. That is also a version of change for some people. And there are many, many ways to, to many battles, let's say, which people maybe carry in our societies under the banner of change. It could be human rights, it could be traditional family, uh, it could be internationalization, it could be patriotism. We see different divisions and in a way everyone fights for some change if he has some level of consciousness. But uh, let us start with your perspective on that. Uh, What does change mean in our region? Здрасти, Владимир. Салют in Romanian. You pose uh, a lot of uh, questions related to to change. I would bring it closer to home um, from a perspective that everybody is probably um, accustomed to. um, And that is, uh, you know, a puddle of water that uh, simply uh, sits and as time goes by it starts to produce um, or 
organic matter um, and uh, starts to rot. So if there is no change in that puddle of water to bring in a little oxygen or some other things, then little by little that particular um, puddle of water will turn into into murk and to mush. Um, it will start uh, uh, smelling like a rotten body and then uh, ultimately the water evaporates and uh, everything dies. So to me, change is a synonym for life. Um, and everybody wants to have a better life, prosperity in a sense. So I think that's the way I look at change um, in our societies, uh, whether it be within the European Union or outside the European Union, as is the case for Moldova. Okay, but that is very general. And um, yeah, okay. if we now, look at... Now, if you... let's take it, now let's take it uh, step by step and, and, and go back to the specific questions that you had uh, because it was just too much all of a sudden. Okay, so what change do our societies need? If I may try to um, make the question a little bit more concrete. In what directions should we change? Where? What is the direction of life which we should follow? I think for uh, for all these uh, three neighboring countries, uh, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, and Moldova, uh, we have a lot of um, economic inequality, uh, which translates in um, um, a high proportion of the population living in uh, poverty or at the edge of poverty, so to say. Um, very specific uh, problems related to social assistance and education in general, uh, public health. Uh, and this is one area where we all three countries need to change quite rapidly. Uh, we, we did have this summer uh, uh, a huge scandal in Romania related to uh, healthcare centers for the elderly and um, disabled. Um, one top politician, uh, specifically the Minister of Labor, and another one, the Minister for uh, Family Issues, uh, both of them related to social protection, generally speaking. Um, were uh, somehow involved in this scandal. Uh, a sort of a big scale corruption scheme where um, these health centers were simply milking state subsidies for the private benefit of uh, the minister and uh, uh, their family. Uh, this is something that needs to change in the sense that uh, we need higher standards when it relates to uh, social protection and health care. Uh, and we need to get rid of corruption. So um, a more, so to say, uh, we can achieve more equ economic equality in our countries if we manage to fix these particular systems um, in such a way that we provide, first of all, safety for our citizens. And I think this is a, an important component for change. Okay. Um... We are societies, societies which have passed through some transition and uh, it's been a painful transition with uh, a huge social price, especially for the older generations. 
and it's been a transition which maybe has empowered some people who are called dubious or even mafiots maybe in Bulgaria. Um, so, and it is also a transition which is related to some kind of trauma is people who have had their relatively clear position about who they are, what they work professionally, what is their uh, value system, had to go through some uh, suffering and maybe destruction of what they believed in. Uh, so I uh, also want to um, ask you about change in this context of transition and wounds of transition. Uh, what yeah. is what is the change in this regard which our societies may need? I think uh, from this particular perspective, transition is not over. Um, and I will explain um, looking at uh, this um, research by uh, um, Hofstede. Uh, that looks at uh, specific uh, social values, and one of the one of them that is very important is um, individu- individualism versus collectivism. That's how Hofstede puts it. Uh, I would rather say uh, autonomy. So, uh, since we are part of the European Union and we are looking at the so-called West, um, we, we want societies that work, that function, and, and state institutions that function uh, as we see in, I don't know, in Germany or the Netherlands or uh, Spain or France or Italy. The very important distinction is that those societies, especially in in Northern Europe, are based on a a very high level of autonomy of the individual. Uh, This means that an individual learns from uh, early childhood that look, uh, these are the rules of the game, and if you want to succeed, it's only up to you to get better every day at playing the game within the rules. And it's also up to you that if you don't like one of the specific rules, you can uh, get your friends together, um, put pressure on the authorities, and try to change that specific rule. In our part of the world, in Bulgaria, Romania, and in Moldova as well, uh, possibly also even in uh, the Ukraine or uh, in Greece and Serbia, I don't know, Macedonia maybe, uh, we are more collectivistic. Uh, We think, we learn that our success in life depends on Um, who we know and our loyalty maybe to a sort of a clan or a tribe or a family Um, and then uh, the power of these particular tribes is enough to change the rules that we don't like the problem that we face and where we definitely need change is that <clears throat> with European integration, within the European Union, we are forced to go towards a state, a society, based on autonomy, not on the collective. But we do not accompany that change with specific measures in terms of education. Uh, Our school doesn't have a set of criteria and standards and values that prepares our kids for a society based on autonomy, but we still keep the system of education that enforces collectivism. 
So this is a tension, this is a cleavage, this is a conflict between how we do things and what we want to achieve. And you surely know, and everybody who listens to us know that uh, only a fool can do things the same way, but expect different results. So this is the type of change that we need. We need to do things another way in order to get a different result. But then now the question is, do we really want a different result? Because when you look at our politicians, that is not always very clear. Does yes. it make sense? Yes, for sure, for sure. Um, you spoke about politicians and um, uh, we see, especially in Bulgaria, but also in the Republic of Moldova, maybe even in Romania, a rising polarization, um, which um, some people like to label it as West versus East or Russia. But for me, maybe given that um, the, the countries in the European Union and maybe close to European Union as well, they are more The, the division is more technocratic versus sovereignist. It is, that is my understanding. And uh, I want to ask in this uh, sense uh, with regards to polarization, uh, what, how, how does change look in societies of great polarization? I mean, uh, some people uh, have their version of uh, justice, of righteousness, and they think that if they want to change something, they have to rally for one or the other pole. But uh, I'm also curious what stands in the middle between these poles and is change affirming the poles or is change more transformation? Is change more accumulation of power over the other side or is change some kind of renewal where uh, the, this contradiction is redefined? Mm. That's a difficult question, Vladimir, but... Um... With polarization, uh, I think comes um, a reduction in power, um, meaning power. Uh, when I'm, I'm thinking here in power, in the sense of the capacity to make change happen in a reasonable uh, span of time uh, to make a transformation uh, that is hopefully sustainable in the long run but to achieve this result in a shorter uh, period of time something that is reasonable sometimes related to the four-year mandate that uh, we have between elections um, When the society is polarized, the capacity to uh, make this transformation is lower because society is more brittle, fragile. That means it, it, it can break at any point. Uh, and of course, if the society breaks, then you cannot um, uh, advance. Um, and this is a paradox. Um, some politicians believe that polarization will help them achieve more power in the short run, uh, but the result is specifically um, the other way around. They lose power because they cannot get all the resources that they need to make that transformation, they lose credibility, and then the resources are wasted, and they cannot be part of the uh, conversation when it comes to a new attempt to make a change. So this is a this is a, a paradox that I think is is somewhat provincial in in nature. Um, we may have seen this in the past in Greece, 
um, definitely in in Spain and Portugal after they uh, uh, joined the European Union. Uh, I think um, as soon as um, uh, the politicians learn that uh, power to make a sustainable change relies on the people in the middle, that's when our political uh, decision-making uh, uh, systems will heal. Um, and indeed, I think this is another matter of uh, related to change. In, in, in this matter, uh, our politicians need to change. Um, I do have my doubts to what extent they have the capacity to understand that, because I don't see many of them being educated um, well enough um, uh, to understand this, this process. But to go back and, and, and make it um, simpler, maybe, um, people who are um, very far polarized on uh, the left and the right, let's say, or white and black um, of the political spectrum, they cannot talk to each other. Because they cannot talk to each other, they can never agree on anything, and that reduces their capacity, either on left or right, white or black, uh, reduces their capacity to uh, make change. What you need is some people that are moderate, closer to the middle, who can listen to the other side, uh, understand the reasoning, point out where there are some similarities, and try to build something based on those similarities. When you have people in the middle, uh, these people can agree on some things, not on all things. Uh, and when they agree on some things, then they can create majorities uh, because that's how uh, our uh, democratic systems work uh, with a majority that decides on how to make the change, when to make it, with what resources, um, what are the results that we are looking for, uh, and who is going to be affected. and. and uh, how do we put some kind of a safety net for those people who are going to be mostly affected by that change? Um, whereas polarization means that people no longer listen to uh, the other side. Um, and um, again, um, whatever is, is not flexible will break. Mm-hmm.